have grocery prices dramatically risen in the last six months? I'll give you my opinion and show you this great food haul that we just picked up today from our local Amish community. Hi everyone, I'm Hope from Under the Median. Welcome to Frugal Friday Tips, where every Friday we give you quick, easy wins, ways that you can spend less and save more. About twice a year, we head out to Amish country and we order a whole lot of bulk food. And they're also a salvage food place where we can buy items that are close to date or slightly out of date for a really greatly reduced price. Now, I'll tell you what I paid for all of this food and sort of run through um, what I paid for each item and show you how you can tell whether you are getting the best deal on food or not. Every week on this channel, we talk to you about practical frugality. So if that's something you'd like to learn more about, make sure that you subscribe and hit that notification bell. All right, food prices. You've heard it, I've heard it, we've all heard it, right? Everywhere it is that food prices are skyrocketing astronomically. Now, I have also been one of those people, I will admit, standing, yes, even in the middle of Aldi, and saying, I cannot believe how much these prices have gone up. So in truth, have the food prices gone up that much? Well, it depends on who you ask and where you look. Even if you look toward the USDA, then you're gonna find that they say, yeah, food prices have gone up a little bit more than they generally do. It also depends a little bit on what you're looking for. If you're looking for meat, well, yes, meat has gone up quite a bit, but being vegan, I gotta be honest, I haven't really noticed the price of meat in a very, very long time. So the question really on my mind is, have the cost of staples gone up? Those things that you always want to keep in your house, because I'm telling you if something happens and the food chain heaven forbid is disturbed as it was last year then what you really want to make sure you have on hand are all of the staples now behind me in these big bags this is what we bought today and we would consider these items to be food staples these are the things that we will have in our pantry at all times no matter what now I'm gonna go through each of these sacks and I'm gonna tell you exactly what I bought, exactly what I paid. Not only that, yes, I actually have a record of exactly what I paid for the same items six months ago. So we're gonna look at my list and we're gonna see, did they go up or did they go down on average? But first, we're gonna start with these items in front of me and we're gonna get those worked through and get them out of the way. These items are salvage food items from Heartland Foods. In case you're wondering, if you're in Illinois, then Heartland Foods is near Cuba, Illinois, right near Canton. So some of you have asked exactly where we go and that's where we go twice a year to, uh, to get our bulk food items. Um, we're gonna start over here because this is what, this is our junk food section, y'all. Now, when we buy bulk foods, we always know we order ahead. So we know exactly what it's going to cost us for all the big bags of items before we walk in. But what we don't know is what sort of salvaged food they're going to have on hand. Now, salvaged food, if you've never bought it, it's items that are close to the sell-by date or slightly past the sell-by date. And you can get them at a tremendous discount. Now, because we don't know exactly what they're going to be offering in their salvaged food section, we always just take a bulk load of money that is available to use for food, and we know that we're gonna stock up on some of these items, no matter what they are when we get there, but it's always a little bit of a surprise. And we always set aside, guys, this is so much fun, and I would encourage you to do this. Look, even if you're on a tight food budget, when you do something like this, it's great fun for you and for the kids to know that you even have as little as say $10, $10 set aside that is available for food that you don't need, but it's a treat. And so you're buying something that is something that is fun food for them to eat. Because sometimes when you're on a tight food budget, the kids feel like, you know, they don't get anything except, well, vegetables and fruit, which we all know is really good for them, but they want just a little bit of a sweet treat every once in a while. So that's what this is. All right, so as we look over here, we have Snyder pretzel rods. All right, tell me in the comment section, are y'all into these? I love Snyder's pretzels. 
and the rods nice and thick so fun to eat love these things 99 cents they always have them in the salvaged food section and they're always 99 cents they have been the last couple of years so we were like really excited to find these and you'll notice that one of the bags is open yeah because on the way home well it's an hour drive and you have gotta have something to eat i'm just saying all right we got three of those so those were a dollar each and then we got i'm just going to hold up a few of them we'll move these around all right definite junk food can i get an amen from somebody in the comment section this is junk food do i buy any of this stuff on a regular basis absolutely not I just don't. Most of the time, nine times out of 10, I am buying food that is actually whole foods, okay? So we're buying a whole lot of plants because we're vegan, right? But um, those couple of times a year, we're gonna get something fun to eat. All right, so we've got Kettle Brand potato chips. We've got sea salt, multigrain, late July snacks. Guys, this is a really expensive brand name. I have eaten this before when I've got it on sale really, really inexpensively, but these are expensive chips. They were four for a dollar. I know, who can resist that? And this is gluten-free too. For those of you who are eat gluten-free, that's gluten-free. This is for my second son. This is a special gift. Do you guys ever get special gifts for your grown kids just because, just because you love them and you know them so well? These potato chips, this is the kind of thing, okay, they're tortilla chips, fire, tortilla chips. He loves stuff that makes your stomach feel like it is being eaten from the inside out. I don't know how else to put it. He likes really, really hot food. So these are for him. And then we got some more of those. And these were for Philip. These are croutons. See this big bag of croutons? 50 cents. I was able to um, get a look at the... Um, Lord knows I didn't look at the nutritional profile, guys. I was able to look at the ingredients, though. And the ingredients, it has some, um, some oil in it, but it doesn't have anything that's not vegan in it. So Philip got two of these croutons, 50 cents, 50 cents a bag. Okay, and this is the last thing I'll show you before we move on to some food that could be considered real food. Now we want you guys to vote on this because this was a split decision between Larry and me all right and so he chose one and i chose the other these are fancy schmancy coffees do i ever buy these no absolutely not but these were in the salvaged food section so they ended up they were very inexpensive i'll tell you how much in just a sec okay they are made with oat milk so they're vegan and this one is it's a draft latte it is peppermint mocha you have to vote in the comment section all right so peppermint latte and this is the original draft latte all right this one definitely my choice guys what is not there's nothing better than like chocolate peppermint and coffee i mean really okay larry does not like peppermint in with anything except york peppermint patties oh yeah so he chose this all right so you guys have to vote which one would you buy all right so fancy schmancy coffees. We got 12 cans of the peppermint. I bet if I turn it, oh, I bet you can't read it still. It's $3.95 for 12 of them. And then we got eight of the original drafts and those were $2.95. All right, so those were the items that we got that were just for treats, just for fun, just for kicks. And now, we're gonna move on some some things that could be considered real food. If you're keeping track, that was about $15 that we spent just specifically on food that we did not need, but it was fun. Now, we're gonna move on to some salvaged food that actually could be considered actually real food. Okay, so we've got these quick five minute grits. Larry loves grits guys and i mean loves grits so this is going to be like his brand new breakfast cereal all right five minute five grits we got a five pound bag 99 cents and we got four bags of grits so we got 20 pounds of grits yeah we got a couple of small bags of coffee we have absolutely no idea we don't know anything about it we don't know if it's good bad or indifferent but you guys know we love our coffee 
So at 39 cents per little bag of coffee, we thought, well, we're going to give it a try. And either we're going to be really like super happy, we only bought two of them, or we're going to really, really wish that we had bought more. It's going to be one or the other. The other thing that I got, I'll put that there. Um, we got some white corn tortillas. We were actually just almost out of corn tortillas. And so somebody tell me, I, I honestly, I usually buy them in bulk. So I don't know if this is a good price or not. Um, but it was a package. I think, let me look here. It was either eight. It was 12 of them. 12 of them. And it was 50 cents per package. So I'm feeling like that was probably a pretty fair deal. Even if it wasn't a screaming good deal, I'm feeling like that was probably a pretty fair price for them. So uh, they had five packages and we bought all five packages because we go through corn tortillas pretty fast. Now these tomatoes are another unknown. They were in the Markdown food section. I don't know anything about them. I've never heard of the name brand and it just says that they are diced for salsa. But I looked on the label and literally all that's in there are tomatoes and a little bit of salt. So um, I'm assuming I can use these just exactly like I would any kind of a tomato product. And best price of all, guys, was the price. It was $1.49 per can. Yep, for this great big can. And I got four cans. Oh, yeah. It is hard to find fruit products that are just plain fruit, especially pureed fruit. So I was really excited when I saw these. They are called fruit blends. I've never ever seen them or used them. This is the apricot flavor. It does have a little bit of added sugar, but it can't be that much sugar because it's only seven grams of sugar per serving. So I went ahead, I took a chance, I bought two of them and they were 79 cents and that's 68 ounces of pureed apricots for 79 cents. Now, what am I gonna do with them? Well, I am thinking adding them to like some quick breads or adding them to muffins. If you guys have any ideas, I would love to see them in the comment section. What would you do with a great big old jar of pureed apricots? Here's another fruit that oftentimes when you see it, it is packaged in syrup, but not this, no. This is just pineapple and it's in the pineapple juice. I have been completely unable for months now to find pineapple chunks for anywhere under a dollar a can. These cans, 50 cents each, and I bought four of them. This name brand I was familiar with, Coleman's Mustard. Guys, this is really great tasting English mustard, and it's kind of pricey in the store. So each one of these little jars, there are eight of them in the package. Altogether, it's one and three quarter pounds of the Coleman's Mustard. It is 99 cents for all eight of them together, and I bought one, two, three, four of those packages, 99 cents each. Now, if you're keeping track, we have $15 that we spent on junk food. That's right, on snacks that we really didn't need. But we only do it a couple of times a year, so it is a big treat when we do. Kind of like this peppermint mocha latte. Yeah, remember, we're voting in the comment section whether you would go with me and get the peppermint mocha latte or whether you would go with Larry and get the plain latte. Okay, so that's what you're voting on. Peppermint mocha, yes. Or just the plain latte. All right, so that was $15 on what we can actually, I think all of us agree, was junk food. And then uh, we spent an, an additional $22.50 or so on the rest of the salvage food that was actually real food products. Now, we're gonna move on to these great big bags behind me because this is the crux of what I really wanted to know. Yes, the prices of specific food items is going up. Those prices are rising, they're continuing to rise, and I would expect them to continue to go up. But my question was, across the board, staple items like oats, rice, beans, are those items going up or are they staying pretty much the same? And the only way to know that, look, 
if you walk in the grocery store, you're just going to walk in pretty happy and you're going to walk out feeling kind of sad every time because it happens to me. Guys, seriously, every week I walk in thinking, oh, it's a great day. Then I walk out thinking, oh my heavens, prices are going up so fast. They're, I was in here five days ago and now they've gone even higher in five days. It's happening to all of us right now. So the only way for you to get peace of mind and to know that you are getting the best bang for your buck is to track it. So I actually have a form that I created that I use. This is a food price tracker. It's a worksheet that actually tells me immediately whether the price of the items that I regularly buy in bulk are staying the same or whether they are going up. Now, I'm gonna show you this form and walk you through it as I go along. And what this tells me is what I paid for some of these exact same items six months ago and what I just paid today. And then I tracked whether the price had gone up or gone down or stayed the same and what the percentage of increase or decrease was. All right, if you like these forms, yes, I'm gonna make them available to you and they will be available and there'll be a link in the description of this video that tells you where you can get the ebook. It's a, it's a longer ebook. It has more than these forms in it. It's really about tracking your food prices and how to know whether you're getting the best bang for your buck or not. So the ebook has more than these forms in it and it's available. I'll leave a link in the description of the video. So we're gonna work our way through this form. I'm gonna start down here. This is 50 pounds of regular rolled oats. This is the equivalent of old fashioned rolled oats. Now, those of you who shop Aldi, um, I know that you'll be able to affirm for me that the price of two pounds of regular rolled oats at Aldi right now is around $2.25. So you're talking a little bit over a buck a pound. So the last time I was in at Sam's, uh, the oats were running about 90 cents a pound. So less than Aldi, yes, you had to buy 10 pounds, yes, but it was a little bit less. Now, I gotta be honest, I had shopped for oats that way for years. And finally, I thought, well, let's see what the Amish community has oats for. Six months ago, same size package, exact same oats. I bought 50 pounds and I paid $25.50 for this same bag of rolled oats, and that was six months ago. Today, I walked in, bought the exact same 50 pound bag of rolled oats, and so the price, did it go up? It did. It's 12% more now than it was six months ago. So today, I paid $28.50 for 50 pounds of rolled oats. All right, so we have one product, it's gone up, it has gone up about 12%. By the way, if you check, various websites, including the USDA, they're gonna tell you, um, and it varies as you might imagine, because you know the, the places that people get their information from tends to vary. But if you look and you sort of research it a little bit, they're gonna tell you depending on what product you're looking at, it's gone up in the last year anywhere between six and 10%. That's the average, all right? So if you look at it across the board. So the, the oats, 12% increase. Moving along here, we have 50 pound bag of popcorn. Now popcorn actually was one of the reasons that we were keeping our Sam's Club membership because we consistently bought a 40 pound bag of popcorn from Sam's and we paid about $37.50 for 40 pounds of just plain old popcorn at uh, Sam's. That's what we paid uh, about six months ago. And so I had never ever priced popcorn from the Amish store and I thought I'm just gonna do it. So we were actually in there, I had not ordered it. And I asked uh, the owner on a whim, I said, hey, you know, we're probably not gonna get it today, but you know, what do you charge for a 50 pound bag of popcorn? And he said, well, I actually have a 50 pound bag, extra bag in the back if you're interested. And so this is plain yellow popcorn. And so for 50 pounds of it, $24.50 for 50 bags. I don't, Larry is clapping behind the camera, guys, because he is a popcorn fan. He has popcorn every single day at work for a snack. And our 13-year-old our son does too. That's his favorite snack. So everybody is like super hyped about the popcorn. I can tell you that. Now, was that less? It was less, but how much less did I pay per pound for this than what I was getting at Sam's? Because I thought I was getting a pretty good deal at Sam's, guys. Okay, so I did the math, and it is costing per pound 47% less 
for this popcorn than the popcorn that I was buying at Sam. So guess where I'm getting my popcorn next time? Yeah, I'm gonna order from the Amish store again. Now this kind of information that I gleaned just by filling out this worksheet is absolutely, it's so important to me because it gave me this incredible snapshot of exactly what I was spending my money on and how much I was saving or how much more I was spending than I was six months ago. And had I not filled this worksheet out and done the math, I never ever would have known that. All right, moving ahead. And I'm going to see if I can move this out of the way, guys. Okay, guys, I got to admit that we cut there just for a second and Larry moved that big bag for me. I didn't move it myself. I felt like I had to like confess that to you. He moved it for me. <laughs> all right, brown rice. We all know that brown rice is actually better for us nutritionally than white rice. I keep both brown rice and white rice on my shelf in my pantry at all times. In fact, we did a four part series on pantries and I told you exactly what was in my pantry, told you what to stock up on. And I also gave you massive amounts of tips on how you can replenish your pantry for as little as five dollars a week. So I'm going to make sure that there's a link to the pantry series up above and I'll also link it in the description of this video because there are very specific reasons why I keep both types of rice on my shelves. All right, brown rice, 25 pounds of long grain brown rice. So the question is, what did I pay for said long grain brown rice? So I, I did not know exactly what to compare it to, but I can tell you that I paid $18.35 for this 25 pound bag of brown rice. So I know without even trying to figure out where else I could get it in town, that that is a super good price. Okay, moving along, lentils. We buy lots of lentils in this house because as vegans, they're a great source of protein and fiber and they're a great meat substitute. Generally, the cheapest price that you can find lentils anywhere in town is actually to buy them at Aldi's. You can pay about 90 cents a pound for lentils at Aldi and that's the least expensive place that I have found. And a while back, I found five pounds at GFS they were marked at like $3.21 for five pounds and I bought massive amounts of them at that price. And the next time I went in and I looked, they were up to over a dollar a pound. So I don't know if it was mismarked or they just got a really good deal or what. So whenever you do this price comparison, here's the deal guys, you have to price compare something, you have to compare apples to apples, okay? Um, let me give you an example. The last time we got white rice, we got it marked way down on clearance at Sam's and we paid $6.41 for 50 pounds. Well, we will never find that deal again. So it's not fair to compare what I am buying today to what I bought six months ago in that case, because six months ago I found a screaming good deal on white rice. So you have to make sure that when you're doing this cost comparison, you're comparing two things that you can actually find again on the shelves, all right? So if you got a super good markdown deal, that's not the comparison you should be making. Moving on to the lentils. Uh, we bought 50 pounds of lentils. The least expensive price I can find lentils for right now in my town is 90 cents a pound and that's at Aldi. So that is what I use for my price comparison, all right? So Aldi, two pounds, $1.80. And I got these 50 pounds for $30.50. It's less, how much less? Well, I'm gonna tell you, all right? It's actually 25% less than the price at Aldi. So this, once again, super good deal. Now, what is this telling me? What this is telling me is a couple of things. It's not really telling me whether the prices on average have gone up or down because I'm not comparing two products that were bought in bulk and two products that were bought from pretty much the same type of place, right? But what that is telling me is the importance of sourcing my food from various sources. That's the problem that people get into is they say, I am a Walmart shopper. I'm just gonna go to Walmart. I'm gonna buy all of my food from Walmart, 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 Walmart. 
Well, you know what? You can do that. But the truth is, if you shop in only one location and source your food from one place overall, your food bills are going to be higher than mine. Why? Because I'm willing to shop around and look a variety of different sources up and find the cheapest price and go with that. So I'm willing to put a little bit more legwork into it and say, it's worth a couple hours of my time to call the Amish store and say, here's what I think I want to order. Call me back and give me the price um, per pound or per large bag of these items. And, um, and then I'll make my decision from there as to whether it's less expensive or whether it's not less expensive. But if you want to save on groceries, you're going to have to shop around. And once again, in regards to the lentils, I want to tell you that, yes, it was 50 pounds in total for $30. And, and so that is two 25 pound bags. So you see a 25 pound bag here. There's another 25 pound bag right behind it. So it was two 25 pound bags. So all together, it was 50 pounds of lentils for $30.50. So it was indeed 25% less than what I would generally expect to pay at Aldi. This next item could be considered among those that are really a not needed item. But you guys, I buy this a couple of times a year and um, I like to bake with baking cocoa. I don't know if you do or not. Tell me in the comment section whether baking cocoa is your thing. This is a five pound bag of baking cocoa. Now, this is the first time that I have bought it from the Amish store. And this was once again, one of those things that was sort of fueled by me watching prices go up in the stores that I regularly frequent. So once again, just like the lentils, I'm seeing the price of lentils go up to near a dollar a pound. I'm like, there's got to be a way I can get them less expensively. And that's what led to me getting 50 pounds of lentils from the Amish store for $30. So the baking cocoa was kind of like that too. I had watched the um, price of baking cocoa the last time I bought it six months ago. I got it from GFS. And the last time that I bought the cocoa, it was like $19.97 for five pounds, which isn't, I think that's a pretty good price for cocoa. But I went back and I looked and it was over $20 a pound. So that sparked my desire to ask our friend Andrew, who owns the Amish store, what he could get it for me for. So Andrew came through in the clutch, guys. All right, so baking cocoa six months ago, 1997 and baking cocoa today five pounds andrew found it for me for seventeen dollars and 95 cents now not a whole lot less but actually that adds up to ten percent less than i paid six months ago once again if you would look at my chart you would see that a lot of these analysis points at the end of each column show that my groceries actually were less but part of that reason is because I decided I was going to look around and source it to see if I can find it a different place for less money. I'm going to move this baking cocoa. Guys, this is 25 pounds of split peas. The guy behind the camera, split pea soup, his favorite soup of all time. Love it. <laughs> he asks me to make split pea soup a lot, guys. 25 pounds of split peas. So the question is, more or less than I paid six months ago? This was interesting. Six months ago, I bought 25 pound bag. I bought it from the Amish store. So I honestly expected that it would have gone up slightly in price, just like a lot of the other goods that I'd already bought at the Amish store six months ago, but no. The uh, 25 pounds of split peas, I paid $16.95 for them. And that was six months ago. Went back today. Same 25 pound bag of split peas, and it was $17. So actually, it went from $16.25 to $17. So not a whole heck of a lot of difference, just, I mean, a smidge. I think for 75 cent difference in um, 25 pounds, we can call that pretty much even. So really, the price of split peas had not gone up very much in six months. We're going to move on down, and that means I'm going to have to stop leaning against this 50-pound bag of, I think it's cream of wheat. 25-pound bag of all-purpose flour, $10.39. That's just about $2.5 less than the same 25-pound bag costs at Sam's. 25 pounds of long-grain white rice. This was $18.35. Interestingly, the brown rice was the exact same price as the white rice. And even Andrew, who owns the Amish store, was stymied because he said usually the brown rice 
is quite a bit more than the white rice. We've got one more bulk thing right over here. We're going to see if we can get it in. This is cream of wheat, guys. It's 50 pounds of cream of wheat. Now, we're only a family of four, so we're not going to eat 50 pounds of cream of wheat, but our two boys who have moved out of the house, they love cream of wheat, so they're going to buy some of this off of us. What did we pay for the cream of wheat six months ago, and what did we pay today? Well, six months ago, I got that 50 pounds of cream of wheat, and I got it for $21.50. What did I pay today? I paid $18.35. So that price, once again, went down 15% rather than going up. So that's everything we got. Now, I'm going to give you, drum roll please, I'm going to give you the grand total of what I spent, and I will show you the actual receipt. Now, if you're keeping track at all, the cream of wheat in the store, those little square boxes, this is 75% less, at least, than what you would pay for the name brand cream of wheat in the square box in your grocery store. And that is actually one of the most powerful things about buying items in bulk. Now, are you ready for the grand total of what I spent on all of these groceries? I'll show you the bottom of the receipt. It actually was $257.50. That includes all of the bulk food items and all of the salvaged food items that I bought. Yes, that was about 400 pounds of food for $257.50. It's all gonna fit. Yep. Okay. It's all gonna fit. Your father's speaking in faith right now. <laughs> Andrew, it all fit. Well, it all fit. Yeah. That is a good haul. So what does all this mean for you? You're watching and you're thinking, I don't have an Amish store near me, or I don't buy food in bulk. I'll tell you what it does mean for you. What this shows you is that although, yes, the price of food overall has been rising. If you are willing to look around, if you're willing to break out of your comfort zone a little bit, if you're willing to shop some places that maybe you have never shopped, you may be able to find some bargains and some food at prices that will actually surprise you and allow you to continue to feed your family nutritious, delicious, food at a cost that you can afford. And not only that, most importantly in these times, to be able to make sure that your pantry is completely and fully stocked. Now, if you want to know how I actually store some of these items, I did a video on storage of bulk items and the methods that I use to store bulk things when they come into my home. And I'll make sure there's a link to that up above and in the description of this video. And I also, by the way, did a video eight months ago when I did another haul from the Amish store, and I'll make sure that that video is also linked in the description of this video. Now, once again, one of the most important things that you can do is make sure that you actually know what you're buying, that you know what you're paying, and that you know that you're getting the best price possible. And the most important way that you can do that and be strategic is to make sure that you are tracking it. If you like these trackers, they are available. This is a paid product, it's not a freebie, but there will be a link in the description of this video. All right, we will see you next week for the next edition of Frugal Friday Tips. But I've got to tell you something. At the end of July, we're actually, we're not doing away with Frugal Friday Tips. We are actually making it Thrifty Thursday. So we're moving from Fridays to Thursdays. So be watching for that on the first Thursday in August. We'll see you guys next week. Behind me, you're going to see huge bags of what we consider to be staple. They food staples or stables? Staples. <laughs> staples.
yeah, staples. Not staples. Not staples. Yeah, those are for horses. <laughs> That's when your mother looks at you and says, were you raised in a barn? <laughs> Close your mouth when you eat. Okay, this is not stable food. It's staple. <laughs> We did see some coming down. We saw some hay for some. And I, it just says that there are diced pineapples. Or <laughs> They're not pineapples. <laughs> They're magic. <laughs> they, turn, they package them as tomatoes and they turn out to be pineapples. All right, moving along. We have lentils. Lent <laughs> All right, moving around. 